Okay, here is my MEP016 portable generator, military generator. Uh, it's been modified. First, I want to show that uh, put a 12 volt battery. This is a size battery from Harley Davidson. And uh, let's see if I can. I made this bracket here. This uh, nothing permanent on this. This will lift right up. I can take this out anytime I want to. I didn't want to drill any holes. These wheels came from Homeyer Distributing, which is the same as Harbor Freight. This is a swivel caster. This one's fixed, and all I did is bolt them on. There are no, no holes drilled in the frame. Didn't want to make any mess. Okay, on this side, I got the same thing. Got the wheels. Here I put on a starter from a BMW. It's a Bosch starter, BMW 318i. Electric start. And, of course, I got... I got the start switch I put on got to be able to take 10 amps uh, this is a uh, older type uh, go over to the tag here this is a uh, John R. Hollingsworth company made this and this is a uh, 1977 model this does not have the solid state ignition this is the older older type the old type has smaller pulley it's got the uh, points instead of the solid state ignition here you can see the points are uh, there's no shaft on the points it's just spring steel which is nice you don't have that pivot to wear out the bulb the bearing the bushing and you got your capacitors right here and of course when you shut it off you just you look at the switch here that just shorts the two together here to here and it'll shut off this is quite nice it's easy to easy maintenance but uh, i don't know where you get the parts just keep it lubricated good and it'll be all right. <clears throat> uh, this thing does not have the primer lever. I don't know if I can show this. The newer type have a primer lever for the uh, fuel pump. There's none on this. And this particular model would not pump the fuel up from the bottom fuel tank used to be where the battery is so now the fuel tank is up on top I put the fuel tank on top and it's above the engine so the fuel pressure will come down this hose into the same valve that we had before Let's try to get that in the picture it's, uh, yeah, okay. We're hooked up right here. Uh, got your sediment bowl for the water. And then, of course, the output is the pipe going back up to the fuel pump. So now, when the, the valves get dry in the fuel pump, this thing's going to st start anyway because there's a, a little bit of pressure pushing on the gas. Now, the, the trick to these valves here, they seem to be really stiff. A lot of people don't know this, but you pull out when you turn, and they turn really easy. And the reason for that is, is a tapered shaft in here. It has a tendency to bind if you don't pull out. If you pull out on it, it just loosens it right up. And that's on right now. And, of course, I made this cover. 
back up here a bit. This cover is actually a part of a water heater jacket. Which, uh, right there's a water heater. I gotta get rid of that. It's gonna be a, made into a roller. And that keeps uh, rain off of it. If you read the manual, you're not supposed to run these generators in the rain. And uh, that'll keep the rain off of it. As for the hookup to the house, everybody doesn't seem to know. They think you need a transformer. No, you don't need a transformer. Instead of modifying this, I didn't cut no wires. I didn't modify any switches or anything. I just put a tap in there where the, where the ground is. And uh, I'm set at 240 volts right here. And then you got your neutral setting and I'll show you why that is I come over here here's your configuration for 208 volt three phase and if you look in the center that uh, would be your neutral okay if we're gonna make this 120 three phase move these this way Okay, now we got, we have a tap here, a tap here, and a tap here. That'll be, each each coil is 120 volts no matter what. Alright, if you take, now you take these two coils here, we'll say, and uh, if I pull this in now, and I read the voltage on this one, it'll be 120. And, well, let me explain this first. Each coil is uh, 120 degrees out. We'll say this is your reference. This is 120 different. This will be 240. If you take two coils and put them in series, it, the phase angle is going to be half the difference between the two. It'll be uh, halfway between 120 and 240, which is now 180. Okay, now if I take this coil like this, and I measure this voltage will be 120 from here to here. I'm not getting this in the picture. Okay, now from here to here is also 120. But if I were to turn this around, we got our 208 back again because of the phase. This dot here indicates which phase these coils are. Okay, so we put this back the way we were. Okay, now we have 120 here and 120 here. And I, I hook this up this way. It looks like it's a short circuit. Looks like these will be shorted out, but they're not because it's the same phase. Now, if we want to get 240, we need to turn, we'll turn these two coils around, which is now hooked to that. Okay. Now we have 120 here, we have 120 here, okay, this is your neutral, right here, and this now is going to give it 240 volts. This is how the switch works on this, uh, on the alternator, where you switch these. Okay, now, put this back the way it was, and I'll explain what this is. Here's the reason why the government doesn't do this, have a neutral. We now have 120 volts here. We have 120 volts here. If you were to split these up and make this a neutral. Okay, now you have 120, 120. If you were to try to draw 3000 watts on one side of your 240 volts, that's putting all your power on one coil. If you put it on the other side, then you're putting all your 3,000 watts on two coils. In other words, you're not using the whole alternator. You want to use the whole alternator. So when you put these together, you've got 3,000 watts split amongst the three coils. And that is the reason for that. But it's uh, safe to actually do that, to use this for your house, because most of the things in your house are split 50-50. You know, you turn the light on, you're going to use this coil, 
you turn another light on you might be using this coil and uh, the only thing is uh, like I have a septic pump it draws 20 amps and if I were to turn that on it's going to draw it off from the same coil but I really don't think it's going to burn it up because these alternators usually take a lot more power than what the engine can put out so I'm going to take this apart and show you where you tap this off okay first I want to show if we're going to have electric start we're going to have to charge the battery I got this is a scrap power supply board it's been modified for 15 volts it will put out 3 amps here's the uh, rectifier to isolate it from the battery so it won't discharge through the circuit board yeah this will put out about 3 amps which not really a powerful charge but in 15 minutes it'll charge the battery up pretty good and if we go down to these terminal blocks here you can see where I tap right here just count down one two three four and this is where the neutral wire would be and of course I just ran it out the side and you can see we come out right here and that's your neutral connection I wanted to show here if you don't want to put a power supply board you can't get one if you notice this pulley on there it's got the uh, groove is actually built for an alternator you can put a car alternator on there put a belt put the alternator somewhere down below it and then you got yourself the uh, charger for the battery this outer parts actually for the rope and this is for your, for your belt Okay, and I guess I'll start this up, show you it run. 